What does the Bible say is the question every believer asks as he goes through experiences in life and wants to know how to deal with that situation. And what if I told you that the 66 books of the Bible show everything someone needs to know about life? The Bible is a threefold symmetry of 22 books. Each cycle or set of books are 22 in total related to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Long before the English language and alphabet existed, before the Latin and Greek and Arabic alphabets existed, the Hebrew alphabet existed since Adam, our first father, means man in Hebrew. Each letter is also a word picture representing something. For example, the 10th letter Yod means hand, the 16th letter Ayin means eye, the 17th letter Pe means mouth, to name a few. And each letter is related to each spoke or three books under it. Each spoke, as the spoke of a wheel, contains a book from each cycle. For example, if you read through the Bible, it won't take much to convince you that Genesis, the first book of the first cycle of the Bible wheel, is well read with Isaiah, the first book of the second cycle of the Bible wheel, and Romans, the first book of the third cycle of the Bible wheel. Exodus, the second book of the first cycle of the Bible wheel, is well read with Jeremiah, the second book of the second cycle of the Bible wheel, and 1 Corinthians, the second book of the third cycle of the Bible wheel. Perhaps some of the books may be harder to convince since they are long, but it is my intention to go through the twelfth spoke, meaning to go through the twelfth book of the first cycle, second Kings, and the twelfth book of the second cycle of the Bible wheel, the prophecies of the prophet Nahum. There is a long list of similarities between the twelfth book of the first cycle, second Kings, and the twelfth book of the second cycle, Nahum. 2 Kings begins with Ahaziah inquiring from the god of Ekron if he's going to get well, but God said he is going to die. Nahum, chapter 1. The Burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth, and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. He shall recount his worthies, they shall stumble in their walk, they shall make haste to the wall thereof, and the defense shall be prepared. The Second Book of the Kings Chapter 1 Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers, and said unto them, Go, inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel? that thou sendest to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, forasmuch as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. When you look at Nahum 1 verse 2, God is jealous. Why? The answer is in 2 Kings 1 verse 2, because the king of Israel went and sought after Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. As a result, he took his vengeance as he said he would. 
Nahum 2 verse 5 mentioned they shall stumble in their walk. In 2 Kings 1 verse 2, King Ahaziah fell down in his upper chamber and was sick. Nahum is the 34th book of the Bible. It is also related to the 34th chapter of Exodus. Verse 14 For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Therefore the 34th book, Nahum, is repeating what was mentioned in Exodus 34, and 2 Kings shows an example. Another similarity between 2 Kings and Nahum is fire coming down from heaven above by God. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. Draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. Go into clay and tread the mortar. Make strong the brick kiln. There shall the fire devour thee. The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locusts. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him. And behold, he sat on the top of an hill. And he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, if I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. Therefore fire coming down and consuming the enemy is what is common between 2 Kings 1 and Nahum chapter 3. Here is a similarity between 2 Kings 2 and Nahum as God rebukes the waters to divide them, and as flaming horses and chariots appear. Nahum 1, 3 and 4 The Lord is slow to anger, and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea, and maketh it dry, and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. Nahum 2, 3 and 4 The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, and the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. And there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Now compare those passages to 2 Kings chapter 2 as Elijah is taken up to heaven by horses and chariots of fire. 
It is also related to a few other themes from 2 Kings, such as the angel of the Lord wiping out a multitude of Assyrian men during the time of the reign of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, and Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Another similarity between 2 Kings 6 and Nahum as flaming horses and chariots appear. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, and the fir tree shall be terribly shaken. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. And there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. 2 Kings 6, 14-17 Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Both 2 Kings 7 and Nahum 3 mention the noise of horses and chariots. the noise of a whip, and the noise of the rattling of the wheels, and of the prancing horses, and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain, and a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said to one another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say, We will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, and did eat and drink, and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it. Another similarity is found between Second Kings 9 and Nahum mentioning witchcraft and whoredom. 
because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. Second Kings 9's Jehu seems to personify the fury of the Lord mentioned in Nahum. Nahum, chapter 1. The Burden of Nineveh, the Book of the Vision of Nahum the Elkishite. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth, and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Chapter 2 He that dasheth in pieces has come up before thy face. Keep the munition, watch the way, make thy loins strong. Fortify thy power mightily. Chapter 9 And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets, and said unto him, Gird up thy loins, and take this box of oil in thine hand and go to Ramoth-Gilead. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came, and said, I see a company! And Joram said, Take an horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshai, for he driveth furiously. Though the wicked counselors may be many in Second Kings, from every nationality mentioned in the book like Jezebel, the kings of Israel, Samaria, the kings of Judah like Manasseh, the kings of Syria, here is the king of Assyria, Sennacherib. King Hezekiah learned to trust in the Lord. At first he apologized for not bringing Sennacherib any gold nor silver. But when the king of Assyria refused to return from Jerusalem, Hezekiah prayed unto God with Isaiah and got his response. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 13. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them? A strong link between the twelfth books of the first and second cycles, namely Second Kings and Nahum, is the mentioning of carcasses, corpses. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain, and a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. 2 Kings 19.35 And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, Behold, they were all dead corpses. After his humiliating defeat, Sennacherib returned to Nineveh to worship in the house of his God and was murdered as prophesied by Nahum. Once again, here is a link between the twelfth books of the first and second cycles, Second Kings and Nahum. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown. Out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and the molten image. I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. Second Kings 19 So Sennacherib king of Assyria departed, and went and returned, and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch his god, that Adramelech and Shareza his sons smote him with the sword. 
and they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Ezahad and his son reigned in his stead. Both the twelfth book, Second Kings, and Nahum, the twelfth book of the second cycle, talk about the bloody city. Second Kings is referring to Jerusalem, which therein Manasseh shed too much blood, and Nahum is talking about Nineveh, which caused the fall of it. Chapter 3 Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Second Kings 21, 16 Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much, till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Beside his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin, in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Nahum, the twelfth prophetic book, spoke against Assyria for his arrogance after taking Jacob Israel captive to the point of them losing their sovereignty. Both Isaiah 12 and Nahum end up with a positive attitude towards Judah because they actually survived and witnessed the end of Assyria. Judah was comforted in Isaiah 12 and encouraged to keep the feasts of the Lord. But after the wicked reign of Manasseh, God said he will give up Jerusalem as well, so that when Josiah came to power and caused a huge revival, God's heart couldn't be turned around until the end of the Babylonian captivity. The name Nahum is derived from the same word comfort. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches. 2 Kings 23, 26 Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. Isaiah 12, 1 And in that day... Thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. You can find my group page on Facebook called Bible Wheel, the threefold symmetry of the Bible examined. You can download a PDF version of this study from the group page. I hope that you enjoyed listening to the program. If you like this study, please subscribe, click on the like button and share this with your friends. I am open to hear your comments and remarks. Check out my other videos in my channel and join me on the next program.